So I'm seeing a new and growing narrative in the Russian media space, and it's it's been there all along, but it's it's becoming more potent. Uh, it is that the counteroffensive has failed. <clears throat> of course, they want to say that uh, the Washington leaders in Washington are saying that the Russians have failed. Leaders in Moscow are saying that the uh, Ukrainians have failed and the West has failed to support them. I get that. But this is like more strident uh, of an argument now. So here we see just a day ago, this counteroffensive against Russia has failed miserably, says Colonel McGregor. We'll just listen to the first like 10 seconds of his podcast. Um, I, I think it's pretty obvious that uh, the Ukraine counteroffensive against Russia has failed. Okay, well, less than 10 seconds. But that's that's pretty much it, right? And that's what they're starting from as an assumption. Where are they getting this idea? Well, if you look at TASS, it's written between the lines. Kiev admits that Russian troops created the problem. Uh, West would like to see a ceasefire in Ukraine by the year end. Kiev troops recruiting in Kherson. Residents admit head, heavy losses, right? They're saying failure, 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 failure. Um, here's the Moscow Times. Russian defense minister threatens use of cluster munitions in Ukraine. Now I'm going to show you two things. One is laughable, and the second thing is about how they have already failed. And we'll get into that in just a moment. Though Russia and Ukraine have accused each other, this is the laughable one, of using cluster bombs in a 17-month conflict, Chogu claimed that Moscow refrained from doing so out of humanitarian concerns. Really? He's refrained from using cluster munitions out of humanitarian concerns? Okay, here a little bit further. Shogu further claimed that Ukraine's counteroffensive was failing and is militarily running out of ammunition and equipment despite the support from the West. Preliminary results of the hostility show that Ukraine's military resources are almost exhausted. Okay, now he lies, they lie, the Russian uh, information space is full of lies. So I wouldn't worry about that, but they are beating this drum for a reason. When you see patterns. You want to ask yourself, why are those patterns being created as they are? Here's part of the pattern. Russian troops to go on major offensive before a decisive battle in 2024. Okay, wait, the, the Russians are going to go on offensive here? Wait, hold on. This doesn't add up. Russia may, now when you say something may happen, it's like QAnon, right? It's, it's, it's the kind of thing like, well, we're, the big reveal is going to come out here. Just wait till when you see the thing happen, then talk about the thing that actually happened. But Russia may go on an offensive in the autumn of 2023. And if the armed forces of Ukraine do not show any success by the end of September. Okay, so why September as a timeline? Like that, that's a little weird to begin with. According to him, if the armed forces of Ukraine fail to break through the defenses of the Russian troops by the end of September, Russia army may and will be able to launch an offensive. Wait, how how are they going to go on an offensive? So here is this is an older map, but it's it's for uh, illustrative purposes. Where here is the like the defensive lines, and then there's trenches all throughout and beyond it, and. Like, you know that if these are all mined, the Russians, and there's there's mines and there's trenches and there's artillery and other things. Now, the artillery, you know, that's not the issue. But the trenches, your tanks have to get over those trenches too. Like, the ones that are trying to keep tanks out. Your troops have to go back over the fields. I don't think that the Russians are interested in counter-offensive uh, at all. I think the Russians want to hang on to this and settle it with this land as part of Russia. I, I just don't I just don't see it. I mean, they have to go this way over back over their own minds doesn't make any sense. And as far as the timeline goes, the uh, September, why September? Why would you limit it to September? Here's the Kharkiv offensive. And then you had a winter stalemate that started in November. So September, October, November, that's like, why would you call that as you know, if it's not done by September, it's it's going to be gone. No, it's going to keep going. There's nothing stopping it. And it could go past that. Look, if the West does not abandon Ukraine, the decisive battle will take place, which should have taken place this summer. It did not happen due to a number of mistakes on the part of Ukraine and the West. More specifically, the decisive clash took place, but did not fulfill Ukrainian goals. Well, that's kind of true, and it's kind of false. It, it's false that it can't go on if it, if it hasn't happened by now. But it's kind of... True. So, look, what's happened is that Ukraine's counteroffensive strategy has mutated. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Let me go on to one more thing here. Let's show me one more article before I talk about that mutation. 
Um, so Ukraine's counteroffensive fails due to insufficient military supplies from the West. Ukraine's military failures during the counteroffensive can be explained with insufficient supplies of military aid from the West, said a senior fellow from Chatham House, which is an, a British think tank, and they're using her this, these, this person's words against them. Okay, uh, Due to the hesitation of Ukraine's Western allies, the Russian army has won enough time to strengthen its defensive lines. That's That's correct. They, I mean, that, that time frame here, what you saw here, this winter stalemate, attrition and surge, right, this November to June or so, that is actually what has given them enough time to build up these defensive lines so that it made it difficult. But that also meant that what Russia was going, or what Ukraine was going to do is actually shift gears. And I talk about this in this video. This one's completely different. Ukraine's third offensive strategy. What's happened is they went against the defensive lines, didn't work so well, they lost some stuff. They started going to shoot stuff behind the lines and trying to, uh, you know, really lighten, thin out the Russian army by really targeting things. And then they started doing things like, well, the attack on the Kerch Bridge. And here's the attack on the Kerch Bridge. So this is the third, and that's why I call it the third uh, uh, counteroffensive strategy. They went to things like this, and they're taking ground in the Black Sea. By the way, Cam camera footage of the drone attack in the Kerch is absolutely fascinating. You've just got to see this. Yes, exactly. Right. By the way, this is uh, Gershenko posted this exclusive footage of the attack on the Kerch Bridge in July using experimental navigation drone from the security service. Um, and uh, so I'm giving credit to Gershenko for, for having posted this. Uh, here we are. Um, the water rip. Russia. Cameras on the bridge captured the first fast road set. And another railway. Out. Right? That's something. So. Green toy, summer. So they have changed their strategy over time, and that's okay. They can change their strategy. It's all right. You you can do that. It, it's there's no no, no loss um, for changing your strategy. Maybe it didn't work out this way, but you're only out when you're out. I mean, the whole premise of the movie Rocky. He they, he took a beating the entire movie or through the entire fight rather, and then still came back. So you're not done till you're done. And so I, I think that's the the premise. Like they want to say that you're out. You're not out until you're out. Okay, so that's what I have to say about the way that the strategy has been. You know, so the Russian strategy is to try to cripple you and think. You know, so this works in politics too, right? So in politics, if you call an election before the voters have finished voting, it can demoralize them, right? Oh, what's the point of voting? The, the you know, they already called the state of Florida, but you know, the panhandle still people are still voting in the panhandle, and um, you know, what, what's the point of going to the polls? Yeah, that can have an effect, but here I don't think so. I think here what we're dealing with is more like Rocky, and when you you don't get to to call like you the uh, one side does not get to say that the other side is out. It's only when the other side concedes that they're out that they're actually out, and so that's the big picture of you know the counteroffensive has failed. Mm, I I don't know that it has. I know that it has mutated. I can tell you that it has changed significantly. And if you want to understand that, that video will be helpful. But it hasn't failed in the way that Russia means. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. The likes, the shares, subscribes, coffees, and thank you for being the kind of person who cares about Ukraine.